Now, manganese is oftentimes confused for magnesium because they look very similar, and a lot of people confuse the letters, especially if you're dyslexic, but manganese is very different than magnesium, although they are absorbed by similar mechanisms and they share similar functions. They are very, very different minerals altogether. So if we look at some of the key roles of manganese in the body, one of the big ones is this one right here, this very first one. It's a cofactor for something called SOD. Now, SOD stands for super oxide dismutase. And uh, you know, without getting into the technicalities, SOD is a very, very powerful antioxidant system that helps your body break down free radicals to prevent damage to cells, to prevent damage to DNA. So manganese drives this enzyme system called SOD or superoxide dismutase. So in essence, it acts as an antioxidant that is again very, very powerful at protecting your cells and your mitochondria from excessive damage from you know, environmental toxins and just the day-to-day -day metabolic maintenance that your body goes through. So without manganese, this enzyme doesn't work very well, so we've gotta make sure that we have it. Remember, manganese is an essential mineral, meaning essential means your body cannot produce it, your body has to consume it. You have to eat it from your food sources in order to get it, and without it, it can uh, disrupt your functions to a great enough a, of a degree that you can die. Remember, that's what an essential nutrient is. It's something your body cannot sustain itself without. Now, manganese also plays a major role in energy production. Um, one of the very important aspects to energy production, and this is especially true today because many people follow like a keto diet or ketovore or carnivore style diets, and so, um, you know, they're relying in, in these types of diets, they're relying on fat as a source of energy. And, um, and that's fine, that's good. But remember too, that we also can generate glucose from non-carbohydrate sources like, like certain amino acids. So if we're having a high protein diet and we wanna be able to access the energy from that protein, we go through this process called gluconeogenesis and this is where manganese is super important. So it helps us convert amino acids into glucose. then the glucose then can obviously help, once, once we have the glucose, we can generate ATP, which in your body, ATP is like money, it's energy. I mean, just like in the real world, you spend money on your food, your rent, your clothing, etc. your body spends ATP for all of its functions, energetically speaking. So we gotta have manganese to be able to do that, uh, at least efficiently and effectively. So very important in energy production of converting amino acids into carbohydrate, especially, again, this is super pertinent for those of you following these higher protein diets nowadays, as, as the trend has gone away from high carb diets and we're moving more toward normal carb diets or lower carb diets, manganese becomes more of an important asset in your nutritional arsenal. Now, one of the other components that it's necessary for is the metabolism of cholesterol. And so um, there are actually some research studies that show that people that don't have adequate manganese actually have hypo, meaning low, cholesterol. Now, why is that important? Some, people, some doctors would say, well, we want you to, let's starve you of manganese so that we can lower your cholesterol. I know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you know, I wouldn't put it past some doctors, but magnesium or manganese deficiency can cause low cholesterol. Why is that important? Because cholesterol is, we kind of refer to cholesterol as the mother hormone. You cannot make, ladies, can't make your estrogen, and your progesterone without cholesterol. Guys, can't make testosterone without cholesterol. So manganese deficiency would not be good in that regard. You also need cholesterol to make vitamin D and CoQ10. These are nutrients that are critical for multiple different functions. You can watch my crash courses on both vitamin D and CoQ10 if you'd like. Um, but again, we need manganese to do this, and this is through the mechanism of cholesterol production. So in, in actuality, to make enough cholesterol, you need manganese to do that. We know it's important for the growth and the development 
uh, of babies, and there are a number of research studies that show, um, you know, redu reduction of growth and development in, in children and in infants that don't have adequate manganese. We know it's responsible for immune function. There's an immune response pathway that manganese plays a role in. We know that you need manganese to help with digestion, certain digestive enzymes, reproduction. Um, there's actually been some research showing that low manganese leads to, for guys, low sperm counts. So it's, you know, we think of reproduction, we oftentimes blame the woman uh, but in reality, it's not always the woman's fault. It's, you know, in my opinion, it's usually equal. It's the male and the, and the female that uh, generally have nutritional problems that lead to a mismatching uh, nutrition ability to actually conceive and maintain a pregnancy. But in this case, reproduction has to do with low sperm counts in men. We know that bone and connective tissue growth. So there is a substance that we produce called a proteoglycan. And, um, and there's another substance called a glycosaminoglycan, or GAG. We'll just shorten and abbreviate it, G-A-G, glycosaminoglycans. These are substances that are necessary for the production of cartilage. And so what we'll see with a lot of people that have manganese deficiencies, we'll see you know, joint pain or arthritis. Um, or bone issues. There are studies showing that people with low manganese levels actually have higher uh, risks of developing bone loss or osteoporosis. So again, very important for these substances or these, these things that are important for, again, for cartilage and, and for bone formation. We know that manganese is very important for the development of the brain, and this is part in, in part why it can contribute to neurological disease. But uh, aside from the development, the nervous system functioning also depends on manganese. And we know manganese plays a major role in blood clotting. Okay, so it helps the blood appropriately clot. So these are all just kind of primary roles and important aspects of why we need this very essential mineral. Now we're going to dive into some of the reasons why so many people are developing deficiencies in manganese. And so we talked if, you, if you've watched any of my shows, and, I'm, and I'm, I'll put a little link up here for you um, to a show with Dr. Stephanie Sinef, where we talked a lot about glyphosate, the, the pesticide, the, the genetically modified Roundup Ready glyphosate, or Roundup, if, if you will, and, and the damage that Roundup can do and the, and the problems associated with it. And, and so we're gonna dive into why and how that actually impacts manganese. So this research um, was written by Dr. Don Huber. And um, you know the question here at the top you can see is what about glyphosate-induced manganese deficiency? Now this is not glyphosate-induced manganese deficiency in humans. The, he, what he's referring to is plants. And it's, this is where it starts, right? If we look at a lot of the research that's, that's, that's coming up, we've got studies that have shown over the last several decades that the nutritional value of our vegetables, of our fruits, is diminishing, right? If we look at, at nutritional values from the 50s and the 70s and the 2000s, we see a trend of reduction of nutritional robustness of the produce that we're growing in the soil. And one of the reasons why, I speculate why, and, and so do so many others, it has to do with the mass application of this stuff right here, glyphosate, which is, again, it's a pesticide. And so what does glyphosate do? Simply put, glyphosate is a metal chelator. And chelator you know, comes from the Greek, it means claw, so it binds, claws. What is it? Claw, claws, metals. What is manganese? It's a metal. It's an essential mineral, it's a metal. And so you can see here in this summary box, I won't read the whole thing to you, but uh, glyphosate weed management, so you use glyphosate to kill weeds, right? Programs, these programs can influence all components of the plant disease triangle by reducing plant uptake and translocation efficiency, changing soil biology and modifying nutrient form and availability, okay, in the environment. Crop cultivars, 
Highly efficient nutrient uptake should be selected where possible. Remediation treatments for micronutrient deficiency, and again, he's referring in this case to iron, Fe iron, manganese is MN, and zinc should be applied at least eight days after glyphosate. Okay, why? Uh, because glyphosate claws or binds these metals and prevents their uptake by the plant. So what this doctor is recommending, if you're going to use all this glyphosate, at least come back afterwards and put down a healthy fertilizer that contains these minerals, thus allowing these plants to not get sick, one, to not get sick themselves. Remember, plants need nutrients as much as people do. Uh, but also, in, in terms of how much nutrition is that plant going to provide you, if that plant couldn't take up the nutrients. So again, is this one of the reasons why our plants today have less nutritional uh, bang for their buck? Is it because we're using in mass a chemical pesticide herbicide that binds and prevents the metal uptake by the plants, reduces the available, bioavailability of those metals for the plants, and leads to plants that do not do uh, do not contain rather adequate mineral substances. So there's that. And then we have this over here. Um, and so, you know, in this particular study, glyphosate interactions with manganese, I'll just highlight a few things. Additions of manganese to herbicide solutions, and I'm just going to tie this together. If you add manganese to herbicide solutions, that results in a reduction of the effectiveness of the herbicide. Okay. Um, and, and so in this case, they're talking about the control of different types of grasses and weeds. So in these crab, grass, lamb, quarter, uh, smooth pigweed, etc. So reduced control caused by manganese could be overcome with higher rates of herbicides on some species. In other words, what they're recommending is they're saying because manganese prevents these herbicides from working well, they're saying up the ante and increase the level of of uh, of of glyphosate that you're actually using to get better weed control, which in my opinion is a horrific idea because again, we go back to this problem, which is when you use glyphosate, it reduces the plant's uptake of these minerals, which then reduces the availability for us when we're eating these plants to obtain adequate mineral in our diets. And again, if you go back to all these functions of manganese, now, okay, let's say you're not eating organic and you are minimizing your manganese in your diet. Now you're at risk for all of these potential side effects and problems associated with low levels of manganese. So again, the, the answer to me is not to increase the, the herbicide. The answer is to um, quit using it and grow it organically, but that's not going to happen. We, we know the powers that be are not going to allow that to happen. So. Um, you need to be aware of it so that you can make intelligent decisions. And if that means you need to look more for organic and you know, budget more for organic so that you don't run into this problem, then by all means, please do so. So um, let's move in next to uh, this kind of putting a little bit more of this together. So again, I know I'm going a little bit off of um, manganese in humans and talking more about the environmental implications, but I think this is important too because one of the things we're also being told is that our carbon footprints are warming up the earth and causing global catastrophe, which, you know, whether you believe that or whether you don't believe that, this is not the forum for that debate. But what I want to, to show you is the role of manganese in stabilizing and destabilizing soil organic matter. So you, you're going to hear this new technology. It's coming more and more to the forefront. It's, it's generally what's being called carbon capture. And so what one of the issues, when you see, hear that term carbon foot, footprint, one of the kind of the, the fears, if you will, of, of a lot of the people that are touting this theory that you know, too much carbon in the atmosphere is contributing to global warming is that we're releasing too much carbon through the things that we do, right? Through, through you know, pollution, et cetera. And one of the things that science has recognized helps to control carbon and keep that carbon matter in the earth and not in the air is manganese. And so if you look here, um, manganese, MN, right, helps to preserve carbon in the soil according to, you know, this, this study publication from Environmental Science and Technology. So I think it's important to understand if we're using, let's go back to glyphosate, which 
reduces manganese because it binds it. Remember, it binds it, makes it unavailable. So it binds the manganese, making manganese in the soil less capable of doing this type of application, carbon capture, but also reducing manganese uptake into plants and thereby reducing uptake of manganese into humans who eat those plants. And we now have a very manganese deficient world caused by the application of this, of this herbicide that is designed to help us grow more food to feed more people, but in reality it's growing less nutrient dense food that is, um, yes, it's feeding people, but it's also poisoning them simultaneously causing nutritional deficiency, which, you know, uh, pick the outcome you want.